open our eyes that we may see to follow the Johnson Moore here, and how are you doing today? I am your hope builder, lifting you out of your sorrow by guiding you to see the Christ within through scripture and practical applications. Today on Daily Devotional, we will be speaking about Judges 18, 1 through 31. Judges 18, 1 through 31. And it speaks about Danites adopt the idolatry. Danites adopt the idolatry. So I want you to get your tablets, cell phones, or Bibles and come and join me in reading this word and we get an understanding of what the word means when it pertains to today's society. Okay, so come on now, let's get busy. Judges chapter 18, 1 through 31, talks about Danites adopt the idolatry. And it reads, In those days there was no king in Israel, and in those days the tribe of the Danites sought them an inheritance to dwell in. But unto that day, All their inheritance had not fallen unto them among the tribes of Israel. And the children of Dan sent of their family five men from their coast, men of valor, from Zorah and from 
Estelo to spy out the land and to search it. And they said unto them, Go, search the land, who when they came to Mount Ephraim, to the house of Micaiah, Michael, they lodged there. When they were by the house of Michael, they knew the voice of the young man, the Levite. And they turned in tither and said unto him, Who brought thee tither? And what makest thou in this place? And what hast thou here? And he said unto them, Thus and thus dealeth Michael with me, and have hired me, and I am his priest. And they said unto him, Ask counsel, we pray thee, O God, that we may know whether our way which we go shall be prosperous. And the priest said unto them, Go in peace before the Lord in your way wherein ye go. Then the five men departed and came to Laish, Laish, and saw the people that were therein, how they dwelt careless, after the manner of Z- Z- Zidoin, Zidoins, quiet and secure, and there was no magistrate in the land that might put them to shame in anything. They were far from Zidoins and had no business with any man. And they came unto their brethren to Zorah and Eshel. And their brethren said unto them, What say ye? And they said, Arise, that we may go up against them. For we have seen the land, and behold, it is very good. And are ye still? Be not slothful to go and to enter to possess the land. When ye go, ye shall come unto a people secure, and to a large land, for God hath given it into your hands, a place where there is no want of anything that is in the earth. And there went from thence of the family of Danites, out of Zorah, and out of Eshal, six hundred men appointed with weapons of war. And they went up and pitched to Karjajirim, Karjajirim, in Judah. Wherefore they called that place Mahaniadin. Unto this day, behold, it is behind Karjajirim. And they passed tent thence, and they passed thence unto Mount Ephraim, and came unto the house of Michael. Then answered the five men that went to spy out the country of Lisha, Lish, and said unto their brethren, Do ye know that there is in these houses an ephod, and a teraphim, and a graven image? And a multi image. Now therefore consider what ye have to do. And they turned to the ward and came to the house of the young man, the Levite, even unto the house of Michael, and saluted him. And the six hundred men appointed with their weapons of war, which were of the children of Dan, stood by the entry of the gate. And the five men that went to spy out the land went up and came in tether and took the graven image and the ephod and the teraphim and the multi-image and the priest stood in the, in the entry, entering of the gate with the 600 men that were appointed with weapons and war. And these went into Makai's house and fetched the carved image 
the ephod, and the teraphim, and the molten image. Then said the priests unto them, What do ye? And they said unto him, Hold thy peace, lay thine hand upon thy mouth, and go with us, and be to us a father and a priest. Is it better for thee to be a priest unto the house of one man, or that thou be a priest unto a tribe and a family of Israel, family in Israel? And the priest's heart was glad. And he took the equine and the teraphim and the graven image and went in, went in the midst of the people. So they turned and departed and put the top, put the little ones and the cattle and the carriage before them. And when they were a good way from the house of Michael, the man that were in the house near, near to Michael's house were gathering together and overtook the children of Dan. And they cried unto the children of Dan, and they turned their faces and said to Michael, What alive thee, that thou comest with such a company? And he said, Ye have taken away my gods which I made, and the priests, and ye are gone away, and what have I more? And what is this that ye say unto me? What aileth thee? And the children of Dan said unto him, Let not thy voice be heard amongst us, lest angry fellows run upon thee, and thou loose thy and thy and thou loose thy life, the lives of thy household. And the children of Dan went their way. When Michael saw that they were too strong for him, he turned and went back into his house. And they took the things which Michael had made, and the priests which he had, and came unto Le- Laish, unto a people that were at quiet and secure. And they smote them with the edge of the sword and burnt the city with fire. And there was no deliverer because it was far from Zidon, and they had no business with any man. And it was in the valley that lied by Beth Rohab, Beth Rohab, Beth Rohab, and they built a city and dwelt therein. And they called the name of the city Dan, at the name of Dan, their father, who was born unto Israel. Howbeit the name of the city was Leash at first, at the first. And the children of Dan set up the graven image, and Jonathan, the son of Gershom, the son of Manasseh, he and his sons were priests to the tribe of Dan until the day of the day of the captivity of the land. And they set them up, and they set them up Michael's graven image, which he made all the time that the house of God was in Shiloh. I have just read to you I just read to you Judges eighteen, one through thirty one. Lord, we thank you. We thank you with all our hearts and our souls and our minds. And God, keep opening our eyes to see what we need to see when it comes to people, places, and things. Sometimes we have blinders on when we want to see things the way they are, but really what they're saying is you, you have to listen more, be attentive more, Pay attention more. Do everything more. Lord, we thank you for this word. For we know that it is true. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen. Amen. 
and amen. Now, come on, let's deep dive into this chapter. This chapter is about how the Danites adopt the adultery, how they acquired the adultery, and the Danites settled Elage. Okay, so, okay, like they say, In this chapter, we see that the Danites sought to inherit their inheritance and to dwell in their inheritance when it came to the land that they were owed. And they decide that Dan, Dan decides to send five men from the Danites to go and possess the land and go search out, find out what's going on with it, investigate um, the, the, the place where they're supposed to dwell at. And so he sends the five men. They end up at Michael's house. Okay. And they turn around and you know they 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 decide to go in, check out, see what's going on, and they want you know, they go around asking their questions and things like that. And they are led to Micah's house. And in a short, a long story short, they go in, take Michael's possessions of, they go in and they take Michael's possessions and they go in and some kind of way they find out about the ephod, the teraphim, and the graven image and the multi image. And someone leads them to Micah's house for those items. And in the process, things are to the point where Michael is left without these possessions. And they take control. The Danites take the children of Dan, take possession of Laish where they settle in this land and they claim this land is their own. Okay. They take Michael's priest, the Levite. They take his ephod, his teraphim, the molten image, the graven image, and leave. And then they decide, the Danites decide to take possession of land that they they thought they were owed for their inheritance. Sometimes in life, when you think you're doing something right, when you think you're doing something right and it turns out to be the wrong thing, what do you do? When someone comes in deliberately into your house to try to take possession of it. I just dealt with this situation in my house. So, I, you know, and it's kind of weird that I'm I'm reading the scripture. It seems like lately I've been reading scriptures that have been dealing with my life for the last couple of days. Every situation, like every day, it's the the situation that's, that's talked about in the scriptures that I'm dealing with in my life. And 
when people want to come in and try to take control over your possessions and take your possessions from you, that is a sign from God. That those possessions do not belong to you. Those things that people really want them, where they come in and take something from you, and know it's not your, know it's not theirs, and they come in and then they take control over what you, you know, what you, what you think you possess. It's taken from you. It makes you reevaluate your life. It makes you reevaluate the situation or where you're at. And. Sometimes when it is done like that, it means that it's not yours and it belongs to someone else that's already owed that. And sometimes it, it be it be like it be like that. You know, where you're feeling like I've tried to have a peace of mind, like I give you this example, right? Like you want a peace of mind, but you're trying to get rid of people, places, and things that don't get bring you that peace of mind, right? And you're steady staying in a place where there's no peace. But you try to you try you try to deal with it as it come as it is laid before you. But then you realize you're fighting an uphill battle that is that God's trying to tell you. This ain't the place for you. This ain't the place. This ain't the people. This ain't. This is not gonna end well. So, what do you do when things are taken from you? When your peace of mind is taken from you, or you thought you had it all together and you didn't have it all together? What do you do? In Micah's case, he turns around and he is left there with nothing. He his priest is taken away from him. His uh, ephod, his teraphim, his multi image, his graven image, and it is taken from him. What does he do? There's nothing he can do. And they see them up, Michael's day, and they set them up, Michael's graven image, which he made all of them all the time that the house of God was in Shiloh. So now they've taken the Danites have taken his possessions, taken all the it's taken his graven image, and have turned around and started to worship the stuff that he was worshiping. They the Danites have have acquired the idolatry syndrome. And sometimes when you when you go and take somebody else's possessions, that's not a good thing. And it doesn't end well for you. You know, um, it's not what God wants you to do. But you realize we will see later on in the next chapter and see what happened with Michael. And see what happens with the the day and the Danites and what happens with them when they accept the idolatry behavior or uh, idolatry worshiping other gods before God, they have rejected God altogether, and they started worshiping this Eve, the the the, the multi image and graven image, and, and and now they've taken the priest from him, and and or you could look at it like this: it's something that God didn't want you to have in the first place. Hmm. You can make it be yours all you want. You can try to put that. You can try to put that into your mind. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. And then when God takes that away from you, God trying to tell you that one yours from the, that. That's not what I wanted you to do. God has a way of opening your eyes to make you see that ain't for you. That's not for you. I don't know where you. It is not gonna work. That's not what I want you to do. So he takes it off your hands, and then how do you feel about that? It, it, you know, some things we got to learn how to let go, and God takes them away from us. You know, and sometimes we got to deal with the situation as you see it, as what it is. God didn't want me to have that. God didn't want me. That ain't nothing God want me to deal with. 
Let go. Let go. Let it go. Let go. Sometimes we have to learn how to let go stuff go. Because sometimes we hold on to our own misery. We hold on to our own misery. When, um, or we, or we done got comfortable in the misery. Or we have gotten comfortable in that situation. And God says, I delivered you from that. So why, why you don't want to let it go? Sometimes we could, you look at it like that. You know? And we just don't want. God delivered you from something. And you still want to hold on to it anyway. Somebody else is distributed to somebody else and you want to try to hold on to it anyway. And things are taken from you. Some things God wants you to deliver from to move you to another level. But you don't want to move to that level because you holding on to that thing God just took away from you. That's why you're not moving to the next level. So, what are you going to do when something you thought that was yours is taken from you and somebody else comes and takes it from you and you don't see the good, you don't see the blessing that it has that is taken from you. You see as, oh, somebody stole this from me, somebody took this from me, and, and <laughs> it just brought my recollection. You know, I mean, it brought back to my recollection a conversation me and my son was having. And right now, we I'm dealing with a lot of um, mental issue, mental illness with him. And every time he talks to me, he always talks about how someone is always taking something from him. Oh, he took this from me. Somebody stole that from me. Somebody, okay, you know, how can I say this? I, I used I used to think like that, like my son. Someone was always taking something from me, but then I had to think about it. Taking it from you because you didn't value it. You didn't. You didn't cherish, what, or you was not taught how to stand on your own two feet and hold on to your stuff. Some things you ought to keep, and some things you need to let go. And stop being bitter about it. Somebody did this to me. Somebody did that to me, and. Look at look at how it was. Look at it as one. Did I take care of, of what I supposed to take care of? Two. Am I blaming somebody else for my downfall? And three. What ways I could have prevented that from being taken from me? I had to, I had to ask myself that. I had to ask myself that and. Some things I had to learn how to let go in my life that I wasn't willing to let go. Some things were taken from me because God didn't want me to have them. And I didn't respect it. I didn't cherish it. I didn't, I, it didn't have no value to me until it was gone. And what was my part in being responsible? What was my part in that, in that thing, person, people, places, and things that in my life, what was my part I played in that from that to be taken from me? I had to look at it like that. What was my what part did I play in my life? You had to ask yourself, what part did I play in that which was taken from me? Did I respect it? Did I value it? Did I did I even cherish it? Did it did it have meaning to me? Did I respect one is respect. Some things we got and we don't respect it. We don't care. All right, well, it's just it's just some it's just something I got and it's mine. And oh, okay, well, then you go into this, when it's when it's taken from you, you go into this. Oh, somebody somebody else did this to me. No, what part did you play in that person taking that from you? Did you invite them in? Did you uh, did you prevent that? Did you make a way for you to keep that? Uh, it's so many questions you can go into that about. 
And some things God takes away from you to wake you up. That ain't for you. That's not for you. It might come through greed. It might come through a death. It might come through losing all your possessions. It might come through somebody taking it from you. But did you cherish it? Did you respect that? And God says, okay, that ain't for you. And he's trying to prevent you from having to deal with these that he, he's trying to get you to see it in a different light of what you what you cherish, what you respect, and what you value. So that is our lesson for the day for daily devotional on chapter 18 in Judges 1 through 31. And I want to hear your opinion. I want to hear what you had to say about it. I want to hear your comments. Comments, you know, you know, what did you get out this lesson? Okay? So, I want to thank you again for listening to your daily devotional for today. Consisted of Judges 18, 1 through 31. And it speaks of... Danites adopt the idolatry and Danites settle in Leish. Okay? I want to thank you again for listening to Daily Devotional and come back again for your next Daily Devotional topic, which will be chapter, Judges, chapter 19, 1 through 1 through 30. Okay? Alright. I'll talk to you later. Alright, babies. Bye-bye. everyone, Sharice Johnson Moore here, your hope builder. I want to say thank you. Thank you for listening and taking out your time to listen to this segment of Daily Devotional. I want to, you know, I want to say I appreciate you. I appreciate you taking out your time and your day to listen to Sharice Johnson Moore's podcast. This segment is daily devotional. And I want to, you know, just say I love you and I appreciate you. And, you know, if you have any topics that you would like for me to discuss on the podcast, just send me, you know, a message. I take messages, okay? And leave your message in the message box. And I will get back with you as soon as possible. I thank you so much for listening to Daily Devotional for today. And we will talk again because we have Judges 17, 1 through 13 coming up. And I want to, you know, I want you to come in and listen and and, and tell me what you think about uh, the daily devotional segments, and I greatly appreciate it. I love you, and you have a blessed day. Bye, babies.